Okay, I have hit the recording button with this deep breath in and deep breath out. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Inhale, exhale. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Brothers and sisters from all over the world, we want to welcome you to our 99th anniversary Toastmasters celebration. With this, give yourself a big round of applause. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are on a very tight schedule with nine speakers, with nine immediate evaluation after the speaker. We are super delighted and we trust we are going to have a lot of takeaway, a lot of inspiration, more so a lot of personal breakthrough. If you are ready to kick start to listen to the first speaker, let's give him a thumbs up. And we shall also invite our very first speaker, BK, to get ready. Yes, I saw BK already unmute himself. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome BK. Work in progress. Work in progress. BK would be evaluated by Joseph Benedict all the way from India. BK, work in progress. Take it away. Hi, am I audible? Bing Kwang, have you done your homework? That's my mom calling from downstairs up to my room, echoing um, like, um, like a person shouting from a mountain Alps, right? And I would naturally respond, yes, mom, but work in progress. While I'm flipping my X-Men comics right between uh, my homework. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Toastmasters, work in progress is a natural procrastination reason that I always put forth during my younger days. And it has evolved as I grown over this work in progress thing. My mom always asked me, Ben Kuang, have you completed your task already? My mopping your floor. I said, work in progress from upstairs. But it's always work in progress, but there's no progress at all. So essentially is that for me, what I do learn is that number one, work in progress is always a convenient excuse for me to escape certain tasks that I dislike doing. And my mom knows that. And my mom says that, Bing Kuang, you have been using the same over reasons for the past 20 times when I asked you to clean up your room. And I've learned that basically is that work in progress is always the thing that I dislike giving my excuses, but it is a convenient way for me to wiggle myself out. I've tried to use to wiggle my way out when I'm trying to do my university assignments too. Usually my lecturer will ask me when I sit right at the back of my lecture hall, dozing away because it was so busy and so so dry. Algebra, I never know algebra is so dry and I have to take it. But basically is that when an assignment comes to me and my fellow classmates has started to chase me, when are you going to complete your part, DK? And I will say, work in progress. Until the last minute of the last hour, on the 11.59th minute, I only complete my task and submit to them. Much to the anger and chagrin from them because I always submitted late my part and they could not complete my part, their parts because they are getting hung over my part. So... Work in progress for me has also translated back into my working days, my new career days when I started out. Because 
there are certain types of projects that I never get to understand when my colleague starts to elaborate the task that I'm going to go through. And I always say work in progress. And this has to stop because my boss has stated that you have been saying that work in progress for so long, but it's never progressed ahead. What happens if your career is also work in progress too? So I learned this lesson back then by my mentor who taught me that try to complete your task at hand. Don't give excuses. For example, I'm very poor in public speaking and basically is I'm very shy during meeting time. But my boss has asked me to take up certain roles that would make me visible in my career. And it's important to be visible among your bosses too because they at least they know you exist better than you're lying behind in cold storage. So my boss has encouraged me to go out and talk about it, but I'm very shy. So that's when I started to get a little bit more courage when I joined Toastmasters. And this is part of my work in progress in my career too. So fortunately, I joined Toastmasters back then in my university days, back in 2008. But essentially, I wasn't very committed then. So I started my Toastmasters career. I started to enhance my public speaking skills. I can never give myself an excuse stating that it's still work in progress because it would jeopardize my career and my promotions going forward. And I do learn that number two is that always focus on what you need to do, complete it and get hangover. Some people like to complete it the easiest task. Some people prefer to tackle the hardest task. I prefer to tackle the middle stuff. They're only tackling the easy stuff and the harder stuff. Middle stuff is it's not so difficult, but it's still doable, doable, but it gives me the confidence to tackle either the harder stuff. Because if I start the easier stuff and I gain confidence, and when I start to tackle the hardest projects, that will give me a lot of issues. So basically, all in all, um, my fellow Toastmasters, work in progress is always in progress, but you need to come to a completion stage and you need to move on because in life, we cannot always work in progress. We need to complete and start a new project and continue work in progress and continue to enhance ourselves. So basically, WIP, work in progress, over to you. Thank you so much. Work in progress. Thank you for the reminder. I have to complete somehow in my goal. Thank you. We will now invite our evaluator, Joseph, to offer your evaluation. Go ahead, Joseph. Good evening to all our Malaysian friends and beloved Toastmasters. My target speakers as already explained in the speech, it's a well-constructed speech, of course, he is explaining from the beginning how the work is progress is nothing but a sham, the sense that he never does it, but he just says working in progress. He, this has started from the very beginning of his life's career, and it, it went on like that, and even to the extent of his education, he was doing the same thing until he, he found that one of his mentor asked him to really put a thought over it and so that you can get it progress in your career also. In the career also, he, he, was, he was asked to work hard to get the work completed, no more procrastination. These are the three areas he has explained and he excelled in this speech. It's a well-constructed speech and vocal variety and delivery is up to the mark. My only recommendation would be that you, are, you should now, uh, I will not say, I only request you to stand and 
speak so that your hand gestures and body language could be seen very well. You are gazing, the audience appears to be missing. So when you stand in front of your camera a little bit distance, you could always see the audience. Aside from that one, I don't have any more uh, uh, thing to say, but it's, you know, if I sum up all your uh, pro progress, work in progress, what you have explained is very well considered to be a progress in your life till you get your career. And your uh, message at the end of it, you yourself has committed to say that do your work sincerely so that the work should be completed. Well done. I hope to see you again in the wonderful speech of yours. Over to you, the Toastmaster of the day. Thank you. Big round of applause to Tsutani, BK, and Joseph. Now, Tanisa, your evaluator is on the way. So before that, we are going to have Daphne and evaluated by Lena to deliver her, her speech. Daphne, I know you are always ready. So feel free to unmute yourself. But she has an amazing, amazing speech title. Am I ready? Am I ready, Daphne? will be evaluated by Lina Yip. Go ahead, Daphne. Am I ready? Obviously, if you ask me this question at this moment, hmm, what can I do? I have to be ready and do my speech on the spot, on demand. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this, uh, this is a demonstration, a very live demonstration by Patricia. I want those master practice here to every one of us here. Now I guess, now I doubt whether I am ready or am I ready? Ladies and gentlemen, I used to think, I used to think and think and think repeatedly. Am I ready? I'm not prepared to be speaker. I'm not prepared to take up the role, leadership role in Toastmaster. Did I want to try it out? Definitely, yes, but I never find myself to be ready. What should I do? I joined Toastmaster many years ago. I took a long break of 10 years before returning to Toastmaster. And I learned to deliver speech. Yet, I took another long break because I wasn't ready to take up leadership role. And when the pandemic hit, apparently I have no choice but to stay at home. And this is the opportunity for me to get in touch with the rest of the world that I have not been in touch with. And that is those masters. Was I ready to deliver my speech online? I wasn't. I was pushed into attempting to speak, just speak in conversation, not a speech, but conversation via Zoom because of a young friend who wanted to take part in a speech contest. She asked me to help her out. I have no choice. I had to learn about Zoom. Prepare myself to speak confidently via Zoom. Was I ready? Not really. But I was put into a situation. So I learned from there on. And I joined Toastmaster. I got back into Toastmaster after a lapse of 10 years, then came back another lapse of three years and returning during the pandemic. Since then, since I returned for the second time during the pandemic, I'm here today still, no longer taking a holiday break from Toastmaster. During this period between when I returned for the second time until today, I have been taken, I have taken leadership role, but when I wasn't ready, 
There is a Chinese saying, when you are ready, your teachers will arrive. I wasn't ready. And there is also a saying, just do it. And the famous quote, proverb from the Chinese state, proverb by Lao Tzu, journey of a thousand steps starts by taking the first step. Hmm, interesting. But I was fearful of speaking in front of everybody, especially people that I do not know. Nonetheless, I challenged myself because to encourage my young friend at that time to speak confidently in the presence of strangers in a contest, online contest, I myself have to break that barrier, the barrier in here. And therefore, until today, because of that, until today, I managed and am speaking right in front of you. And thanks to Patricia for inviting to me to be part of the nine speakers for today's project. I am grateful because I got challenged when I wasn't ready. I was notified being a third speaker just minutes ago. And as all of you here right now have heard, Patricia suddenly cue me to be the second speaker. So ladies and gentlemen, don't worry when you are not ready. Just do it. Because we never know whether we can swim or not until we take the first plunge into the water. Apparently, I discovered that hmm, the platform is what I have been waiting for. I have been ready, preparing myself for this war, I guess. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry. Just do it. Just attempt. Take the ball step to go into the unknown and you'll discover whether you are ready or not. If you fail, so what? This is a Toastmaster platform. This is somewhere that is safe for us to fail. This is some place when we fail, we get encouraged and motivation by the, our fellow Toastmaster. So remember, am I ready? Throw that away. Tell yourself, I am telling myself, I am forever ready. Back to you, this must the evening. I am ever ready. That's a strong message. I took it home. Let's hear from your evaluator, Lena Yip. What say you, Lena, on Daphne's speech? Thank you, Patricia. Can everyone of you all hear me? Toastmaster Daphne. I love your storytelling because I feel that you are very natural on your screen or virtual stage. You have a lot of facial expression, body movement and hand gesture that engage and connect with us in your story. I personally feel like you are talking to us directly face to face because of your natural expression and your movement and your story that connects to us. And I truly agree with you. Every one of us always tend to ask or procrastinate things because we will give excuse that we are not ready. And the story goes very well. Well done for that. You have a very good transition and you have a very nice story that connect with the audience. Because I think everyone here can relate to your story very well. If there's a thing that I would like to suggest for you to make your storytelling more interesting and more engaging to the audience, perhaps instead of asking yourself, am I ready? You might want to ask the audience, audience, are you all ready? So that bring you closer to the audience and connect to the audience more. And that might attract those who are disconnected from your story to be more engaged back to your story. 
so far, that is my comment from your speech. To summarize, you have a very good storytelling, which is very natural with your facial expression and body gesture. Second thing, your story connect very well with every one of us. And the third thing that I would like to work, uh, I would like to challenge you to work on is to connect with the audience by asking them some questions so that they are more engaged in your story. With that, I will pass the floor back to distinguished Toastmaster Patricia. The stage is yours. Thank you, Lina. The power of asking questions. I got it. And I'm sure, yes, Stephanie is nodding. To make sure that we are having this ever-ready mindset, yes, I'm throwing a curveball now to Tarmizi. I know Tarmizi's evaluator, Jay, is ever, ever ready. Tarmizi, I'm so proud of you because you totally embrace that notion, I am ever ready. Tarmizi, your speech title, The Hare and the Tortoise. The uh, Hare and the Tortoise, loud and clear. Let's welcome Tarmizi on screen. He will be evaluated by Jai Narayan. Give him a voice message to his time later on when Jai is evaluating. Go ahead, Tarmizi. All of us have heard about the famous fable by Aesop about the hare and the tortoise. The hare race with the tortoise in a place. The hare challenged the tortoise to a race. Everybody knows, we all know about the story the head just zoom from the starting line, but the tortoise, not but, the tortoise move slowly, one step at a time. The, 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 what else? The head, it was zipping all over the place. And we know that from the story that the head actually stopped in the middle of the race. And he took a nap. But what did the head? What, but what did the tortoise do? He kept on chugging along. The, the, one step at a time. And when the hare woke up from his beauty sleep, he saw that the tortoise were near the finish line. He ran as fast as he could. But the hare kept walking the the and he won the race we all know about the learnings slow and steady wins the race is that right but i'm going to do a bit of twist we've got three learnings from the hair and the tortoise learns number one trust the process the tortoise knew that his goal is to get across the finish line. So what does he does? What does he do? He kept on walking, chugging along, step by step. The, the, the. He doesn't care whether the hair zooms past him, runs straight. He only focuses on what he has to do. So. He is trusting his process to achieve the goal. Lesson number two. Delayed gratification. Why did the hare slap before finishing the race? Because he felt that his privilege. He wants to gratify himself before actually completing the task. So he slept. At the end, what happened? He lost the race. Lesson number three. Luck is what you make of. The hair, did, the tortoise did not know that the hair is going to sleep in the middle of the race. But what did he do? He kept on chugging along. Thup, thup, thup. What happened? Sl the hair slept and he won the race. Luck is what you make of. So let's take a look at our own life, my own life. 
I have a destination that I want to go. I know what's the process. One of my biggest process is learning to speak in public. And one of the platform is, of course, Toastmaster. Regardless, no matter how hard it is, I am trusting the process. Do my project speeches, continue my pathway, do my evaluation, do take up my roles, no matter what. This is my process. Do I celebrate early? Maybe sometime, but I do sacrifice. I delayed my gratification because I know the goal is there. Luck is what you make. Recently, I got promoted without me really asking for it. The reason I got promoted was I could handle tough board members. Was I looking for it? No. Was Did I make the luck? Yes. Why? Because I kept on doing the process. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a process. Our goals are all the same in general. We want to become better speakers. We want to become better leaders. We want to create that opportunity. We want to make our own luck. So what do we do? Remember the hair? Remember the tortoise? Trust the process. Delayed, delayed gratification. And make your own luck. Over to you, Toastmaster of the evening. Thank you. Wow. Three powerful lessons learned. Let's hear what Jai say about Mizi's vocal variety. Go ahead, Jay. Hey, Mizi, ladies and gentlemen. They say it's not what you say, but how you say it that matters. And how you say anything at all involves what is known as voice dynamics and vocal variety comprising of four P's. Pitch, pace, pause, power. Toastmaster Timizi, did you have pitch, pace, pause, power in your speech today? Of course you did. Pitch. When you spoke about, well, how sometimes uh, the, the hair, well, he just zoomed across to the towards the finish line. Did you have pause? Of course, when you said, tup, 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 tup. Did you have pace? Yes, every time you describe the hair, you slow down one step at a time. When you describe the hair, you speed it up. And of course, when you started telling about your own uh, life towards the end at work, uh, you had a little bit more pace in it and an element of power, which was, oh, how do I do this? Oh, by taking part in everything, evaluation, table topics, speeches, etc. because it's progress. So overall, I felt your voice modulation and vocal variety comprising the four P's I mentioned was very well demonstrated. Now, why do I also say that? Let everybody today here know, those of who you are seeing the first time, that I'm blind. And Timizi, if you can engage a blind man who cannot see anything with your story from start to finish, you did have vocal variety. Otherwise, I would have been disconnected and totally disengaged. But you had me hooked in like a reel and a bait at the end of it with your voice modulation. Now, what could you have done a little better to be more powerful Great. as a speaker? I would just say maybe a little more percentage of personalization. What do I mean by that, Timmy Z? Uh, you could have made more of your story part of your own life involving uh, the lesson you learned rather than describe the whole story for the first 40 minutes, 40% 40 of your story. Shorten the story, give us more of personal uh, personalization. And next time, believe me, Timmy Z, I would love to be present in the audience when yeah. you present your pitch, pace, pause, power, impact presentation. Timmy Z, very well done indeed. I loved it. Very engaging with your vocal variety. Back to you, Toastmaster of the evening. Thank you, Jai. Thank you, Jai. Power, power, power duo. Thank you, Jai. Moving on. Yes, we are ever ready. And of course, the next 
leader who took on the challenge is DTM Sukhwa. Sukhwa will be speaking next. She has this fantastic title that I always love, I always embrace. Just do it. Just do it. She'll be evaluated by DTM Carlos all the way from Lima, Peru. Go ahead, Sukhwa. Thank you, Distinguished Toastmaster Patricia. Just do it. These three words, simple yet profound, has been my life motto since I joined Toastmasters 10 years ago. It has ignited me for this journey of learning, growth, and transformation, which I'm really eager to share with every one of you today. 10 years ago, I was very blessed to be able to work in a company, a corporate club, which have Toastmasters for all the employees. And I, as someone who is so eager to progress in my career, I joined this Toastmasters club. Little did I know that it offers me more than public speaking. Why do I join Toastmasters back then? As a young accountant graduate, I never wanted to settle down to be an accountant for the rest of my life. Who wants to deal with numbers all day long and counting money, which is not yours? I seriously do not want to do that. I joined Toastmasters because of the advice of my mentor to say that, hey, Toastmasters can not only improve your English, it can help you to climb up the corporate ladder. And so I believe in that. But I was so afraid to be asked to speak in front of a group of strangers, especially in a meeting room with a board setting. Therefore, I tell myself, I need to push myself to take action, to stand up on the stage, even though it's very scary and make me feel very nervous. So just do it, inspired by Nike, but I'm not their ambassador yet. So how do I embrace these three words? Tell yourself or ask yourself, have you been fearful in speaking in front of audience? Or have you been fearful to do something or going towards your dream? For me, action is something that can help us to learn something faster. Rather than planning, learning, sitting down to do nothing, I tell myself that I need to take real drastic action in order to progress faster. And that is why over the years, I tell myself, even though it's very scary to do something new, but when I do it, I can feel the adrenaline rush. I try to convert that fear into excitement and that has always bring me new experiences and grow myself as a stronger person. So ladies and gentlemen, I believe every one of you here, no matter which time zone that you are in today, you are here because every one of you also have this just do it spirit. And that has also shown that you have learned something new today from all the great speakers here today. Remember to embrace the fear and turn it into excitement. Learning new things always excite people. And for me, this phrase has always made me as a more confident and courageous person to conquer the challenges. This not only can help us in our career, but also in our personal journey. Imagine that we have to face all kinds of challenges in today's world. It's so dynamic. Who knows the people that you love will no longer be with us tomorrow. And how do you want to race through that grief and stand up stronger again to move on in your life? It's definitely not easy because we are dealing with so many emotions day in, day out. But we just need to take that action to move forward and tell ourselves to change the perspective of life. Ladies and gentlemen, just do it. These three powerful words has propelled me further and also make myself to be a more self-motivated person. So how about you? Remember that whatever actions that you take in your life can be a positive catalyst in someone's else life. The fact that most of you here are Toastmasters member, you have that skill 
to share your thoughts, to speak up your mind, to make a difference in other people's life. So continue to speak, continue to inspire, because just do it will definitely make the life in your magic to be unfold. So just do it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Back to you, Patricia. Just do it. For some of you, if you like this statement, give us a virtual high 10, high five, because it's life changing. With this, just do it. DTM Carlos, all the way from Peru, Lima. Take it away. Good morning, everyone. My pleasure to, to be part of this wonderful team. There are something that I share with you in the chat box, but I want to refresh on one positive thing that I have for the speaker today is the topic selection. Nothing would gather people more than the feeling that what you're saying affects me some way, somehow, and you really got that. Second point, I guess you have a very positive and very strong voice, and it does not sound authoritative, but it it means some kind of command as a leader. Congratulations on that. The body movement was very clear, it was very vivid. So congratulations on that. I'd like to now go on to the content. The content has been simply great. So congratulations on that. Very clear examples. I feel that Phil Knight from Nike would be certainly proud for you to be the ambassador of, the, of such a brand. Congratulations. You will. As, as you said, and I want to rescue the word, not yet. Lessons learned, not yet, because you are still in the process. If I could recommend something for you is state in your presentation, make sure that the purpose of the presentation is clear. So when your evaluator gives you some recommendations, that is the point. Did she achieve her purpose? My answer, immediately will be, yes, she did. Because I felt that I was in power. I felt that everybody was here paying attention fully. So the attention of the audience is a very clear denominator, I would say, for this occasion. And now, specific recommendations. Oh, yes, of course, smile a little bit more. Because when you smile, you share, you transmit, you convey tranquility. You're on the way. You're almost there. But do not forget, enjoy the journey, right? Let's not forget that you have wonderful positive things. I really like all the opening, the vocal variety. The delivery was very good. Content was great. And the vocabulary was very clear. And thank you so much as a part of the audience because of your planning, your preparation. That shows respect. And it's a second value after integrity. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Wow. Thank you so much for the very, very insightful evaluation. And I love the exchange from Malaysia to Peru, Peru from Malaysia. How beautiful it is in our borderless Toastmasters. No need to spend a single money. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, I'd like to challenge our next speaker, Falik. I know Falik is ready and she has a fantastic title. She will be evaluated by DTM Morley from India, but also a great leader in Founders District. In fact, he's right now the president of Smedley Chapter One. DTM Morley, whenever you're ready, feel free to turn on your screen. Yes, you are on with this. Falik, mom, mom, Falik. Over to you, Falik. Ladies and gentlemen, I remember when I was 10 years old, I learned how to swim. And my teacher was my dad. When I learned to swim, he started off telling me that you need to be confident in the water. And he asked me to hold on the side sideline of the pool. So over time, as time passed, went by, I started to gain confidence and I started to let go of the sideline of the pool and start to swim. And we did the first movement like that. Like he said, just imagine how a dog swim in the river. They'll do like this. So you just do that. So I did just that. And as time went by, 
my skill got better and I was able to swim. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you might want to ask me, what is M-O-M, mum? It is not mum as in the mother, but it is mind over matter. Now, that is why I was able to get myself float and swim from one side of the pool to the other side of the pool at the age of 10. In life, we have to deal with so many challenges and it has brought us from one stage to another. There's one thing that keeps us going and keep us achieving, make us achieve those things that we want to achieve in this life. It is mind over matter. Another example of when I was 17, we went for, I went for a driving license test in Malaysia. You have to go to a grueling eight hours classes and then you have a, a computer test and asking all you all these questions. And then you have to go through the, 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 the learning courses at the driving center. And then at the end, you have to take the test. Now, that night before I went to those tests, I told myself, if they can do it, I can do too. So that's what I've been telling myself throughout those two or three weeks of courses, learning and learning and learning and learning. I say, if they can do it, I can do too. If they can do it, I can do too. I'm I'm telling myself that all over, all over. It, it's, it's kind of like a song that keep on playing in my head. That eventually... I managed to get my license just by one time test, especially when you have to do all those heel tests, remember? I think Malaysians remember this. And then when I have to go for job interviews, the same thing I told myself, if they can get, get it, I can get too. If they can do it, I can get too. Because I have this fear, fear of authority. When I was young, I was scolded many times. I was scolded many times by teachers, uh, perhaps par parents sometimes, and all those uh, big figures in my life. So it has made me feeling scared. I'm afraid that I will fail. And when I fail, I feel crushed in my heart. So that's something that I need to overcome with. And that brings me to the biggest challenge in my life in 2015. I I failed again. I failed my PhD. I I have trouble with my marriage. And I gave I just gave birth to my son alone without a husband. So 2015 was not a good year for me. Now again, mind over matter. I told myself, yes. I'm allowed to grieve. I'm allowed to give my emotions sometimes to grow, to develop. It's called as emotional intelligence. So I did that. Give myself sometimes one night, two nights, one week to heal, to, to be in that moment. And after that, I told myself again, if they can do it, I can do too. If they can become mother, mom, can do too. If they can finish their PhD, I can do too. So that was exactly that. What that's what I did. I went out, get out of the room, go and I went to um register for a new PhD course. I managed to finish that while raising my son with my family. After finishing my PhD, I managed to get a job, and here I am today telling this all to you mind of a matter so whatever that you're facing in your life ladies and gentlemen always 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 value yourself value your presence you are important and how to tell that tell yourself every day that you are important and one day you can be the thing that you want to be as long as you're telling that and installed it in here, your CPU, program it well, and eventually it will start and do the, the task that you need to do. One more thing that I need to overcome in my life right now, one challenge that that is meta over mine at the moment because my mind is not worked up to that yet. It is 
to lose weight. Now, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and pray for me so my mind can conquer that so I can lose weight soon. Thank you. Back to you. Wow. What a mom. I absolutely love this mom. And I'm very curious. What DTM Morley, very experienced evaluator, has for you? Over to you, DTM Morley. Mind over matters. Okay. Um, first of all, my appreciation to the entire team for organizing a beautiful session. And uh, congratulations, Dr. Uh, Falik. I'm really amazed. When I saw MOM, from the point of Toastmaster, I thought it was minutes of the meeting. But when uh, the uh, team already said, mom, I thought you were going to talk about mom, but you started with your dad. And uh, you experience, you shared uh, with us your experience right from age 10, 17. And I don't know the terminology because I, you have not told me at 10, what was, which year it was. However, I want to first of all, appreciate you for completing your PhD. When she told me you are a doctor, I was thinking you are a medical doctor, but congratulations on your on completing your PhD, as well as getting up, I mean, giving a, a good education life to your son, and then now getting a job. Great, I really admire your speech, and the speech, the topic itself is writing a speech with a mission. What is MOM? Now, if tomorrow, if somebody is going to ask me MOM, I'm going to tell them mind over matter. And you also changed that matter over mind at the end. Great. I'm going to give you some of the areas which you really did well, like uh, all those things which you said, but some areas where in future you can improve. If I'm going to be in your place, I'm going to do that. I love the way you explain to the entire members what our life is all about changing and moving from one to another, like the way you uh, move from one show to the other show in your swimming. Beautiful analogy, and we call it the great Upamama Lankara. And uh, I'm, I'm also happy to know that you can now drive very safely. I hope so, because of the, all the uphill tasks, everything. What are the areas I want you to um, improve is, you spoke about three different situations of life at your age 10, 17, as well as your PhD. It would have been better, like I'm standing, you could have also stood. You could have given pauses at every session. That is after 10, after 17, and for your PhD, how you grew up your children, uh, son. The second thing is voice modulation. You are running in the same one, Great, but in future, it would be better if you can change your voice modulation and give a point for everybody to understand. Third thing, you could have just asked some of our members, did you face similar situation in life? How did you manage? I have managed so-and-so, so-and-so. So these three points, I would love you to have it and uh, the way you even compared it with the CPU and live swimming, great. Overall, your speech was good, attractive, MOM, mom versus minutes of the meeting, were mind over matter, matter over mind. Great, and I would love to see your next speech also. Over to you, Toastmaster today. Thank you, thank you, DTM Morley. We are ready for our next speaker. She has been waiting anxiously. And I'm so happy to introduce Deanna. She will be evaluated by Mariana all the way from Canada. Mariana, whenever you are ready. Yes, I see you. Certainly a perfect match if you want to find out more. Let's hear from Deanna's speech, Ambitious Loner. Ambitious Loner. Over to you, Deanna. Thank you, Patricia. My name is Deanna. And you, if you... If you have met my friend 33 years ago, they will describe me, oh, Diana, we call her a problem child. She always everywhere alone. Well, basically, I'm the only librarian in school. I had to be alone doing my job until I recruited my sister to help her. So yes, I have been always alone 
since I was a very small child. Moving forward 15 years later, when I first re reported in my current job, the very first word said of my boss at the time was, welcome to the organization. Uh, let me introduce you to the staff. But for your information, you are assigned to a very new unit created just for you. So that translated being, uh, here you are with your unit alone. You have nothing to refer to. No one to ask about anything. Basically just you and the screen. And since then began the time when my eyes were glued to the screen from morning to night. The only time my head will come up from the PC or the computer is when somebody shouted, I'm about to switch off the lights. Anybody still in the office? Yes, I'm still here. Said my, myself screaming from the very back end of the office, at the very corner. Yes, that's how alone I am in the office. Knowing that I don't want to stay alone till midnight, I went and collect all my stuff and left. And the job continued at home. So basically, I was working 24-7 in IT infrastructure. My job just didn't stop. I need to go out. So basically, when I go out, I'm supposed to be get out of my cocoon, being somebody else. But no, instead, I went on to another branch. I asked, where's the server room? And I went straight to the server room, did my job, and then I said, okay, I'm done, and then left. The very next day, my supervisor will ask, did you inform the head of the branches what you have done? Oh, I'm supposed to say that? I said, because I've already emailed them. Why should I have to tell them whatever I did to see? Because I've already mentioned that in the email. Turns out, lacking of interaction to humans sometimes saw us read, react differently and misunderstood easily. Despite the law the long hours working, I realized that all my hard work isn't enough. Then the light bulb moment came, moving into the 12 years working in the same organization. Okay, I'm not going to stay doing whatever I'm doing now. I had to do more. I had to learn about the business. The opportunity came when there's an interview for scholarship. So I went in. Despite my skepticism that they will accept IT people to go on doing master in economy. So I did anyway, I did the interview anyway. Knowing uh, to my surprise of all the 10 candidates, that I'm the only one well prepared for the interview. This is from IT department going into scholarship to apply for economy, master's in economy. I'm the only one prepared. What about all the other business employees? Turns out they are looking for something that are lacking in others. Which I think at, the, at that point is my ambition to learn something more. To know more extra and extra from what I have been doing all along. So going into the master, I learned that networking, having good relationships with all types of students, all types of people really help in your life. And I have the best moment, one of the best moments in my life was studying at 40 years old among the fresh graduates from 19 to 55. And that's a very broad age for me to be in the same room and have same and have different opinions and together we come to a consensus, which I love so much. Going back to the office, I learned that I need to do more instead of just looking at the screen. I need to understand the pain points from the end user's perspective. That's where I learned that I need to be in another area where I went into IT service management. Back then, when people ask me where you want to sit, I would always choose at the back end. And at that point forward, I chose I'm going to be in the middle, right smack in front of the door, greeting everybody. So that's what I've been that's what I started been doing and then I need to enhance more. What should I do? People keep saying that you always have your own hobby. Nobody's going to like the same hobby as yours. 
that's okay because when I joined Toastmasters, I learned that I'm about to meet another com another set of companies. Wabi and Trove, as you all know, misery loves company. So it turns out I need a new company to enhance my life. So if you meet my friends now, and if you ask, do you know Diana? Oh, we saw her name pop up everywhere, the social media. And she will be the reference point for us to ask for anything, especially to motivate ourselves. And if you ask me myself, who are you, Diana? I'm still a loner, but I'm certainly not the loneliest because I'm always in a great company that keep lifting me up, keep wanting to share knowledge with me so I can convey to others in return. So am I an ambitious loner? I am. And I will, uh, I will always going to be ambition to motivate me, myself, and others. So thank you. Thank you, loner Diana. In fact, Diana was the only person managed to get our past international president, Richard Pack, to Zoom into District 51 during the pandemic. If you want to know more, please come to one of our court meetings. We'll get you more information on that. All right, now we are going to invite our evaluator, Mariana, to deliver your evaluation. Go ahead, Mariana. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and especially you, Diana. And first of all, thank you very much for sharing your story. I always like when people share their own life experiences, and that you did through your storytelling. But not just about that, but you also, uh, excuse me, I just have to change my setting. But you also showed us how we can change our settings. And I can relate to you. I'm an introvert. And when I joined Toastmaster, it changed my life. And so did yours. And I'm sure many, so many of us. So excellent storytelling, excellent message. Yes, we can be alone, we can be, in, we can be introvert, but we still can join others' company and learn with and from others. I loved your Zoom presence. You were visible, you were clear, and you use your hands as well. If you would stand up and you can move back and forward, that maybe would en enhance your presentation, maybe not, that's absolutely your personal preference. My suggestion would be to improve your presentation is your background. I know you use the official background for the day, which is great. But when you're presenting a speech, you have to live in that speech. Everything you do, everything you present around you as has to be related to that speech. And it was distracting seeing two other smiling faces in both of your side and they took away some of your shine. So in this case, I would just suggest a very neutral background, and then you can change it back to an official background. And that would be one of my suggestions. The other one, I don't know if it was just for me or others as well, but your sound was muffled somewhat. So you might have to check your microphone, either the location of your microphone, or you might want to change your microphone because I had to really, really come close to my computer to understand what you were saying because the voice came muffled. And that's something it's uh, you have to figure it out. You may or may not be able to change once again, but uh, you have in order to improve your presentation, you have to work it out. You might need an external microphone if your computer is not working with you. My computer doesn't always work with my voice and sometimes just not getting through. But your topic was excellent and you use your hand and your message through your story. Your life story came out really well. And yes, we all love to learn and we have to learn to learn together. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Mariana, all the way from Canada. And I certainly love Mariana's background. In the future, we will invite you again. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we are going to invite finally Tanisa to deliver her speech. And to evaluate Tanisa is Dr. Gayatri, who just managed to tune in quite a while ago. And I'm so excited for Tanisa as she's giving a speech on certainly one of my favorite topics, the joy of giving, the joy of giving. To evaluate Tanisa is Dr. Gayatri. I see Dr. Gayatri is already. Go ahead, Tanisa, it's all yours. Thank you so much, President, Madam Patricia. Before I begin, I would like to engage with all of you from all around the world. Could you please, in one word, let me know in the chat box, what brings you joy? Please type it out in the chat box. Okay, I see replies. Thank you so much. I see food, chocolates, feeling in love, sleep, hugs. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for engaging with me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, fellow Toastmasters from all over the globe for tuning in. As you do know, my joy is in giving. Now, when did all of this start? Well, let me tell you, it started when I was a very young child. You see, I come from Malaysia. Malaysia is a rich country full of wonderful culture. I come from a mixed parentage whereby my I'm a mix of Chinese and Indian parentage. So I celebrate Chinese New Year and I celebrate the Malayalam Vishu. And guess what? Even though I celebrate these two amazing festivals, I still love Christmas. Christmas is a time when my family and I gather underneath the Christmas tree where we open the gifts. And it's not just about the gifts. I didn't even enjoy receiving the gifts. I enjoyed giving them. And as I got older, I remember that I couldn't celebrate even my birthday with my family because I live so far away being independent, working in another state. I decided on my birthday to buy a huge box of cookies, brought it all the way to the workplace just to share it with my colleagues. None of them knew it was my birthday, but they were like thanking me anyway. And that gave me so much joy. As I got older, I felt, hmm, I think I'm not doing enough though. And one day, the universe decided to answer my prayers. The thing is, my laptop, the one that you guys are seeing right now, decided to break down. <laughs> I couldn't do any work. I looked up at the universe and said, tell me, what, what actually do you want from me? So I thought, maybe the universe wants me to work on my health. I've been not really taking care of my health because I'm always in front of the computer all the time. I decided to set my alarm and go to the park. One day when I was walking, I saw a bunch of individuals wearing this uniform, giving out free food. Hmm, food. I love food as well. Let me check it out. I found out they were giving free vegetarian food and they come from a non profit organization called Searchy. And it's a global non-profit organization. I went there and I said, what is it? What are you guys doing? And they said, well, we want to introduce new ways of how to have a better, a healthier lifestyle. Would you like to try some food? You can pick anything. Just donate a little bit of money to us. I went, okay, let me take one nasi lemak and one sandwich. Well, I wasn't satisfied there, you see, because I'm a giver. I can't just take it, right? So I said, hmm, I got no money right now. Everything's at home. Let me just print right back and I'll come back to you. I ran all the way back home, searching all around the house. Could not even find even an inch of money. Well, I opened up my wallet, found everywhere and decided, hey, look, I do have three ringgit. Now, three ringgit is very little for me. But I thought, I hope they will accept it. I went back to the park feeling very sad and told them, I only have three ringgit. Is that okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the reply was, it is not the amount that you have given us, but it's the thought that you put inside when you gave it to us that filled our hearts with joy. 
would you like to join us as a volunteer to be a part of this global organization? I was so taken aback, so thankful to the universe that my laptop broke down because if it didn't, I wouldn't have met these amazing people, these amazing individuals who are doing so much good. Fast forward to today, I have joined a charity organization and we have managed to raise a lot of funds for an old folks home. To reward all of us, the, the old folks home company decided to reward all of us with vegetarian food. And I just recently came back from a talk, which was just a few hours ago. Hence the migraine I was talking about earlier. I remember looking at the screen, being fresh in the mind where the founder of the Searchy Global Inter Organization said, when you give love, when you give love, give unconditionally without expecting anything in return. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to end my speech by saying, even if you want to give a little bit, give words of encouragement, give words of inspiration. And like me, if you love Christmas so much, Buy a little tiny candle which doesn't cost much. Put a little note that says, you light up my life. And trust me, those tiny little words can change their life. That's all from me. Thank you. And back to you, President Patricia. Wow, Tanisa, you are the light. Let's hear what Dr. Gayatri has for you. Over to you, Dr. Gayatri. Thank you, Madam Master of Ceremonies, fellow Toastmasters, guests, and my speaker, Tanisa. You love giving, and here is the joy that you gave us today. I love the build-up that you had for your speech, right from your family background and how you enjoy spending vacations, all the festival celebrations, and from there, you link the joy of giving to actual charitable causes how this particular sentiment that your family gave you, it ended up turning you into a strong person. It ended up giving you a character and personality of your own, which reflects in your charitable work today. What I also loved, Tanisa, was the expressions on your face when you were narrating the story. That subtle smile, it somewhere started reflecting on the faces of the audiences as well. And that is where, my dear friend, you connected with the audience. Beautifully done. Talking about the feedback you received in the previous speech, I feel that you implemented the feedback from your previous speech effectively. You removed, you, you were given a suggestion to remove all the non-relevant aspects and examples which you've removed and that made your story crispier and to the point. I also love the way you implemented the feedback about remaining on the focus. You kept the focus on one thing. You did not get deviated at all, distracted at all with any other aspect, except for the joy of giving. Very well done, Teresa. Now, here is the thing where I felt that you could have given us a little more joy. And one of the aspects was that I noticed that a lot of hand movements were happening, but we couldn't see them. Probably, it's okay for you to deliver the speech sitting or standing as per your convenience. Maybe the camera placement could have been a little farther away so that your hands near your boobs would have given what you wanted to say. So purposeful hand gestures with the words would have made a greater impact. Second suggestion what I would like to give is that I believe you have a ring light right in front of you. Now, this is one issue that happens with everyone who wears specs that it reflects. Now, here's the secret I'm going to let you in on. When you are in an online meeting, you are any which way not expected to be looking at the boxes, whether people are there or they have just switched off their cameras. You have to look into that circle and it doesn't really matter if you can see anybody else. Just take off your glasses and start speaking because that is how you are going to connect. And the final place where I feel as a challenge you could take, it is this. When you're engaging audience with a question, don't say what you're going to do, just surprise them. Don't give them a heads up that, hey, I'm going to engage you. Same with the closing, you had a powerful closing. Instead of telling that you're going to give the closing, 
just leave people wanting for more. All in all, a wonderful speech, Kanisa. Excellently implemented feedback. Wonderful body and build up. A little work on your opening and closing and on the presentation skills will make you a better speaker. Thank you so much. Back to you, Madam Master of Ceremonies. Wow, I certainly enjoyed the chemistry going between Dr. Gayatri and Tanisa. Thank you so much. Moving forward, we are ready for Suisin, our VP for other speakers. Suisin, whenever you are ready, please unmute yourself. Yes, I know. Suisin will be evaluated by also our university student, Shriya. Shriya. Yes, Ria, I believe you are somewhere out there. Yes, all right, Suisi, if you are ready, I know you are ready. Don't be afraid to start over. Don't be afraid to start over, Suisi. My dear fellow Toastmasters and all the leaders here, are you afraid to start over? I believe you are not because you are Toastmasters. We are Toastmasters. We are never afraid to start over something. So yeah, for me, although I, I'm a Toastmaster, I was afraid to start over. So a few months ago, I founded a page, a club, which is English. And I founded that club with the pure intention to improve our children's public speaking skill. Why I did that? Uh, for, four months ago, yeah, I would travel to Malaysia and Indonesia and I saw amazing public speakers. And I, in Malaysia, I saw Malaysian students are very amazing. They are really good at public speaking and they are you know, standing in front of the people and sharing their ideas and their story. And I saw, wow. Malaysian students are very intelligent and excellent. And I really want our children to become confident speaker like them. So after I came back from that youth communication camp from Uncle Mike camp, and I immediately next day uh, rented an apartment and then I found a journey to victory public speaking in English, the club for my students. At first, you know, I failed. Uh, although I rented the apartment, I prepared everything and, you know, the students were so afraid and they didn't want to join it. And also I founded like a club uh, for the youths also. And the very first time, nobody come except one, my best friend, and nobody come. So I was, you know, so depressed and I feel like I fail every step. So I second, second, uh, I try second time and again I fail. So what about you? When you fail in something, how many times do you take to get up again? So for me, I took one month, I didn't do anything. I feel depressed a lot. And I was like alone in the apartment and I just teach my students like English uh, for skill and I came back alone in the room. So. I write down, why am I being like this? I write down, what make me feel depressed? If I stay alone in the room, I feel more depressed. I, I was like a crying baby, like most of the time crying, especially at night, uh, depressed and thinking only the negative thoughts and I can't move on, I can't get up. So if you are feeling depressed or like sometimes you feel like you are failing in uh, your job or in your career or number one thing, what you have to do is like write down all of your emotions and what make you feel depressed? What make you think of negative things? So please write down everything and confirm all of your emotions. So when you write down, you will see this, this, this. So what we have to do is we have to change our focus. So yeah, after I write down, I know myself more and then I change my focus. I change like, instead of doing this, what can I do better? What can I do next? And who should I collaborate with? 
So uh, I just like, okay, I don't, I can't stay alone like this. Uh, thinking alone, negative things, all the emotions, all the feelings, I can't stay like this. So I confirm uh, and I change my uh, focus. And then and the second step, what I do is I communicate with the people. I started to go out of my house and I communicated with the other speaking clubs in Yango. I communicated with the youth. Now I'm communicating so many organizations in Yango, in our country, Myanmar, and I communicate. So I learn more. I hear their ideas more and they are, you know, uh, what they are doing so i got more motivation and inspiration too so after i communicate with those people what i do is number three c is uh i do commitment so i commit myself with them okay so th this is my passion this uh, are my strengths and this is what i can do for you and for our community so shall we do this together something like this so i make the commitment with the people i made the commitment uh, with the parents uh, of the children like we we'll love to do a public speaking event for our students uh, i invite them and then today just today also i we made a uh, uh, public speaking workshop uh, conducted by uh, CS Education Center and my club, uh, Journey to Victory Club. And it was like a successful event because we had uh, 25 to uh, 27 people uh, in our event. So well, what I love to say is uh, when you feel like negative or when you are depressed or when you feel like you are failing in something, Number one thing you have to do is please write down all of your emotions, feelings, and confirm your feelings, and then change your focus. Change your focus to the better things or the things that you can control and the things that the way you forward or something like this. So please uh, change your focus. And number two C is please communicate with the people, do networking, and you will earn insights, inspirations, and enlightenment from the people around you. And number three C is please uh, do commitment with the people so that you can learn more and you can grow more. So everyone, please don't be afraid to start over. Back to you, our MC. I heard you. Don't be afraid to start over. Let's hear from your evaluator, Shriya. What say you? Go ahead, Shriya. Thank you so much, uh, Master of Ceremonies, Patricia. So, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters and guests, Shri Swin has definitely given a wonderful message and an amazing speech today. So she has given this uh, amazing speech on resilience. We all need resilience in our life. No matter if we fall down for 10 times, we have to get up the 11th time. And that is what her speech was about. And she conveyed the message in a really wonderful way so that she got us hooked down from right from the beginning till the end. She definitely shared about her own experiences, which is definitely a way for us humans to connect with each other, to empathize with each other, and to learn from each other. And I really liked that about her speech. She started saying uh, with about how she, uh, you know, kind of uh, got to know about other club members. And she said how uh, she liked that Malaysian students had really good communication skills, and she wanted to improve her herself in her communication skills. And uh, but at the starting, one thing was that I couldn't clearly listen to her, maybe because of some technical glitch, some network issue. That is something that maybe if you could fix it, maybe sitting in some other place where there is good network connectivity would help. But overall, after that, the, I could really uh, clearly see and uh, listen to you. And apart from that, I really liked how you started with a great smile. You had that smile throughout and you didn't lose your confidence. That is a wonderful way uh, to be a conference speaker and you keep practicing, you keep better at it. Uh, just a few suggestions that I would like to give would be that when you started off, you could have started with a question. You have a really amazing topic. You talked about hardships. Maybe you could ask, when was the time, uh, did you, uh, you know, feel you know, you would want to give up, but you didn't. Did you ever experience something like that? Any open-ended questions like yes or no, something like that would definitely make the 
you know, speech much more engaging and interesting for others. And secondly, your eye contact. A few times when I think you were just trying to recollect something, you were looking up ways. Maybe that, if you could avoid, would have made a bit your speech and your overall posture, body language more connecting with your speech and audience. And uh, thirdly, uh, it was great. Uh, again, you could give your speech uh, by sitting or by standing. It's your personal preference. But uh, you definitely did show uh, your whole uh, you know, body language, you did move your hands, you did use that vocal variety, where you were uh, showing excitement, where, we, where you were kind of in a situation of hardship, you did use a different tone, which definitely allowed us to kind of uh, empathize with you, which was really great. So next time, I would just say that maybe, uh, and also one thing I would like to add is that the speed of your speech. Uh, at the start, it was good. At the end, also, you were speaking in a, you know, in a generally frequency that we would prefer to but in the body i felt you were a bit fast you were trying to rush it because you wanted to fit in in the time frame next time just practice it a bit more so you'll know how much time you will take and go according to that frequency thank you hey thank you with this we are moving on to our speaker number nine alan he is ready 15 years 15 years, Ellen would be evaluated by, of course, my favorite evaluators of all time, Shamini. With this, over to you, Ellen. 15 years. Am I audible? Am I visible? Thank you. The answer lies in the heart of the battle. Prove that Ellen Ming has a lion heart. Ellen, your prime candidate as a drop dead case. You have severe triple coronary vessel disease, two of which 100% block, another 80%. Your heart is now left with one third of its function. You are so blessed, my friend. You got diagnosed on time. What are the options available, Dr. Mohan? Heart bypass surgery is the best option. What if, if I choose not to go for the heart bypass? I can put you on medication, but you risk having heart attack anytime or worst drop dead. Don't waste your life, my friend. What? Drop dead anytime? Blessed? Don't waste my life. That doesn't jive. I just came back from Mount Kinabalu High in April, early this year. It is the highest mountain in Malaysia. My friends were fast. I couldn't catch up to them. It was about 1.5 kilometers away from the rest house. I was sweating profusely. My heart rate was racing fast and I felt difficulty in breathing. Maybe the altitude sickness had kicked in. Suddenly, it began to rain. What? The weather forecast said it is going to be a fine weather. That rain forced me to slow down. It was a persistently gentle drizzle. It lowered my heart rate. I began to cool down. And reflecting back, if not for that extraordinary timely rain, I could have a heart attack episode or worse, drop dead. But instead, my heart condition got diagnosed. Dr. Mohan was right. I am blessed. I'm given second chance. I shouldn't waste my life. And thus, I made the decision to go for the heart bypass surgery. The day came, 10 July 2023, Sunway Medical Center. Dr. Tan, the anesthetist, asked me three golden questions. What is your name? Feng Ming Allen. What is your date of birth? March 1981. What procedure are you here for? Heart bypass surgery. Immediately after I answered all those questions, there was a total blackout. 
It was as if my power button was turned off. And after an eternity, I saw a bright light. I opened my eyes and it was 12 a.m. midnight sharp. My chest felt as if it was broken into thousand pieces. I couldn't really feel my left leg. There were these tubes and wires all over my mouth and my body, and I couldn't speak. I tried to breathe through my nose, but there was no air going through my nose. It was as if I'm drowning. For the first time in my life, I thought I am going to die. I signal weakly to the nurse to remove my tubes. We can't, Ellen. We must wait for Dr. Tan's instruction. The intubation tubes abrogated my torn seal. It triggered my gag reflex. I was vomiting, coughing. The phlegm and the saliva was all over my face and I couldn't take it anymore. I tried to remove the tube myself. No, you can't do that. The nurse immediately restrained my right hand. I groaned and tears were streaming from my eyes and I was in pain and despair, sense of helplessness. The nurse called Dr. Tan. I overheard. Maximum dose of morphine. Yes, doctor, we will wait for you to remove the tubes. It was a long, long, tormenting six hours wait before Dr. Tan came in. At 6.30 a.m., he appeared. Hello, hey, how are you, Alan? Oh, gosh, gosh, tormenting six hours. How am I? Well, I put my hands together, begged him to remove my intubation tube. Okay, let's remove those tubes. Words cannot describe how relieved I was to feel the air pass through my nose and go into my lung once again. I thought I was going to die, but I breathed again. You are blessed, Ellen. Don't waste your life, said Dr. Tan in a very peculiar, profound, prophetic manner. manner. Well, yes, don't waste your life, my dear friends. Don't waste your life. Because life is precious, life is great. The average lifespan for a heart bypass surgery patient is 15 years. I am blessed. I'm given the notice of the time I had in this mortal world. Thinking back, I will make the best I have and be grateful from this day onwards. I have only 15 years to do so before my heartbeat stops for good. The answer lies in the heart of the battle. Prove that Ellen Ming has a lion heart. With that, back to you, Patricia. Thank you so much, Ellen. We shall now invite Sham to offer your evaluation to Ellen. Ellen. How wonderful it is today that we see you with your new lease on life. I love this project is about connecting with storytelling. I love the pace that you took us through when you took us through one of the most trying, if not the trying time, most trying time of your life. You started with a very uh, profound way when you actually opened and showed us the surgery scars in saying, you had a lion heart. That really created a big impact as an opening. What I liked is as you went on, you went back into how it all started when it started from your hiking to Mount Kinobalu. And you were very uh, conscious of the audience today by telling us that it's some, it's one of the highest mountains. It is the highest mountain in Malaysia because some of us are from India and different places. places. So that was very good. The second thing I liked is you had conversations in your speech where you conversed with your doctors, two different doctors, Dr. Mohan yeah. and the second doctor at the end. So that that was that really added to the what I would say in India, like the masala or the spice in your speech. 
throughout your speech, you had a wonderful pace. It was so very easy for us as the audience to follow through through your story. And there were times when you brought so much profoundness in your speech, when you said that you used an alliteration that was peculiar, profound, prophetic, the last thing when you heard what the doctor gave you about how you should value your life. Don't waste it. You also had great um, way of saying things, giving us the description of how you woke up from your surgery, you know, and how horrible the experience was with the vomit and how you couldn't breathe. And it was as though you were dying again. That really painted the voices. I mean, the words that you used really painted a thousand pictures in our minds. So kudos to you, Ellen, for doing that. What would I say about this speech most of all is it's just through your storytelling, it was very inspiring. Because you, you did not tell us anything. You showed us through your storytelling. And that's the point of connecting with storytelling. Now, if I had just minor things that I could suggest to you is maybe in the beginning when you were speaking with Dr. Mohan's voice and your voice, there was a little bit of monotone in the same. It was almost the same voice, slight difference of intonation, play around with the voices. That's a very small thing. And the transition when you were talking about uh, what was happening now with the surgery and then when you went back to see how it happened in Kota Kinabalu, there was a little bit of a gap there. Perhaps you would say, it all started. Maybe just use those three words. It all started so that we could know that's a transition because suddenly you were in Mount Kinabalu. Other than that, it was a very wonderful speech. I would suggest that you use the speech outside of Toastmasters because I believe you have a message that's important for all of us to listen to. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Sean. With this, ladies and gentlemen, Happy New Year. Happy New Life. Thank you so much, Ellen, for wrapping all of us with that powerful message. Now I'd like to invite Lucky. You know, as a matter of fact, Malaysians are always a little slower. So I just would like all of you to imagine we are at 11.59. We are going to do our 10 second countdown. I know my fellow Malaysians will be laughing at me. Yes, Malaysians are a little slow sometimes. And fellow families in India, please bear with me. In Canada, Peru, do bear with us as well. Imagine now it's 11.59. PM, okay, I'd like to invite Lucky now to get ready and we will do collectively a countdown. So if you are okay to shout it out, we start with 10, okay? If not, then do but, it in your heart quietly. But I have, I have some words to share with you first. Yes, of course. Can we do the countdown then when you share? Because okay, you fine. want to lock okay. in the all right. time. Okay, first. all right, okay, go ahead. All right, on my count, three, two, one, ten. Ten. Nine. Happy birthday! Okay, Lucky, over to you. Lucky is going to bring us on a toast. So if you don't have anything, get ready, okay? No, and Lucky yeah, will speak. Let's go and charge your glasses. In the meantime, I want to share a few words with you all. If you don't yes, mind. Lucky is going okay. to share a few words. Yes. Some, some 30 plus years ago, on, on each morning at tea time, you know, canteen at telecoms, I used to meet for a cup of tea. Now, I was subjected to the most annoying word I thought at that time, Toastmasters. <laughs> Loud and clear, the word was uttered over the rest of the words, Toastmasters, Toastmasters, Toastmasters. One morning, I plucked the courage to confront the leader of the pack and display my annoyance. The leader, <coughs> Manoharan, he's still a Toastmaster, who enlightened me with, we have been doing this to attract you so that you will join us. We know you will enjoy attending. He didn't want to explain what Toastmasters is all about, 
but rather find out for myself. I was invited to attend a meeting the following Saturday. I love the idea to escape work or on weekends. The following Saturday, I went, and as I entered the meeting room, I was amazed at the gentleman and a couple of ladies, all dressed in black or blue jackets. Luckily, I was in one too. What was more amazing is the fact that you don't get to meet these gentlemen or ladies ordinarily. Now, only on special occasions, they were a breed of GMs. Immediately, a thought occurred to my mind, in my mind. Now, here was an opportunity to rub shoulders with these GMs, whom otherwise you probably never see or see them only in a distance. Besides, the idea fitted my plan to make more friends. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, was 30 plus years ago. That was my first attendance at the Telecom Malaysia Toastmaster Club meeting 30 plus years ago. I'm still a member of the club, one of my five clubs. Ladies and gentlemen, this certainly calls for a toast. So please, raise your glasses. Here is to Toastmasters and Toastmasters. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses and let's do this toast to the all over the world as they go around week after week tracking and toasting. To Toastmasters. Cheers! Woohoo! If you are able to, we invite you to on your screen. Woohoo! Cheers! Good life! you. Back to you, pretty, pretty Patricia. Thank you so much. Now it's photo time, photo time for sure. So we will like, uh, invite everybody to on your video if you are convenient and on your brighter smile. I would also like to invite some of you to help take more photos as well. So if you have taken a photo, let me know, send it over to me. BK, are you convenient to take as well? Oh, Deanna, Deanna can help take as well. All right, I'm going to give the count. I'm not sure, Patsy, if you are able to speak, give me a thumbs up. You can't, it's okay. If you can't, just do like this. <laughs> oh, she can speak. Okay, Patsy. Go ahead. Patsy is our VPPR. Okay, that's a great. That's a happy, happy everyone. This our day, Toastmasters. I'm going to take one photo for each page it seems like we have two pages i don't know which page you are so that actually will be two shots the first page i'm going to count one and two three great thank you that is the first page it's wonderful i great. am going to i see a lot of that. heart yeah patsy get them to to do the heart emoticon whatever emoticon Oh, okay, oh. just one, just one sec. I'm just saving on the screen. So I'm going to the second page. You remember, you could be on the second page too. So let's do the second page. Whatever you are, please switch on your camera. All right, Shirley, uh, I read five. Yeah, are you ready? Okay, I'm going to right. count down three. Two, beautiful, one. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, back to Patricia, thank you. I, I thank guess you. I'm lucky thank I'm you. on one page. Yeah, thank you so much. And certainly we would also like to recognize all our speakers tonight. We would collectively take a photo. And Patsy, if you are all right, would you be able to help us? And we will have to spotlight all the speakers. I'm um, sure the uh, appreciation, sir. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, spotlight I'm going to share that. This yeah. is for all the speakers. For all the speakers, I'm going to share that all for all the speakers. Just one sec. Yes, let us oh. spotlight the speakers. Okay, all right. I'm yeah, sharing please. the speakers, yeah, no. sir. Can anyone to spotlight all the speakers for us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, no, doing no. It. I'm doing it. Oh, good. Okay, Daphne, help. All right. And somebody needs Anita? to take the photos. Yes. 
just, just highlight them. Aha. Let me see. The only four we go to about five, six. Yes. Should be nine. Tamizi. Certainly, Ellen. Tamizi. Sukhwar. Let me see. Demi, is anyone? Suisi. Oh, is not there. Marley, Diana, is Diana here? Uh, Suisi is not here. Ah. Uh, Diana is missing, right? Diana yeah. is eight. Diana is eight. I see eight. She, yeah. Only Suisi. Okay, put me on as well. Can you? Okay. I, I, okay. I have added for Suisi. Now for okay. Patricia. Okay. Done. It's complete, right? Yep. Okay. Nine plus one. Right. Uh, wait. I... Nine plus one. I don't see Patricia in yet. I added her. Huh? That she's means in I all the photos. She, she's, the... she's in all the photographs. Okay. Yeah, that's that's true. Okay. Take all the nice okay. speakers. <laughs> all the nice speakers. You guys are amazing. You know how, how much... How much message and inspiration you have given to all of us. Fantastic. Thank you to all the nine speakers. Okay. So she's sharing. So I'm going to take the photos. Oh, Lucky, can you help us to take the picture? I will take them. Oh, you have? Okay. Big smile, everyone, to Lucky. Send his love to Lucky as well. Send your love. Great. <laughs> Moving on, we are going to acknowledge our evaluators as well. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me take one more. Okay, yes, I took one more. Okay, fantastic. Good. Now, let's move on to also recognize all our fantastic evaluators because this time around, they need to evaluate immediately after the speech, which is actually a very, very stressful thing, but they manage it so effortlessly. So well done on that. And uh, yeah, Lucky need your help again to help us to spotlight all the done, evaluators, done, even done, they are done, still done, in. Done, 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 done. Done, done, done. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Evaluators, they are still in. Molly, Dr. Gaya. Only two. One now, left only one. Uh, Dr. Gayatri, you got her. And uh, Shriya, Sha. Well, they all come Shai. and go away fast. Wow, they come and go away fast, huh? I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Test them. Okay. I'm dancing. Yeah. Okay. Only hands dancing. dancing. Now you're the Lone Ranger. Oh, now else I'm the only one here. Yeah. Can we spotlight all the evaluators as well? Yeah, doing, doing. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Hello, Sharmi Shival. Yeah, Murali. Carlos. I, I need Murali to uh, Hello, everyone. turn on the I, video. Yeah, Murali may, may not be available. If he's not on the video, that means he's not available. Okay. Yeah, we concentrate on yeah. Carlos. We are what about, what about Jean, Natalie? Yeah, Natalie as well, yes. Because she's going to be our... Yeah, she's going to be our evaluator later. She's also the role player. Is it already completed? Oh. Nine yeah, plus one plus one. Six. So should I be only ten. See six. Should be ten. I see six. You see six, ah. Huh? Interesting. What happened? I think Lina is Lina in? Lina? Oh, she seven, left? Because there's one one window with two of us. So there's seven of us here. But yeah. Lina, I think she left already, right? <coughs> Lina, yep. Joseph. Oh, yeah, Joseph. Joseph, is... Yeah. Joseph is still there or left? He's gone. He's left. Okay, no. never mind. Okay. Early bird. Early bird, yeah. Okay, never mind. Uh, President Lucky, we we I'll need to it. have the honor taken. Wow, that was fast. Uh, what about Pessy? 
<laughs> role player <laughs> later. Yeah, Pessy is the role player now. Okay, we're done, right? Done? Yeah, later first. Okay. Okay. Done. Okay, well, we are doing this very amazingly our own way. <laughs> we'll improve oh, on this. Okay, role player list. We want to acknowledge your role players, certainly. Patsy and everybody. Oh, yeah. Hang on, hang on. Let me quickly take a photo now. Oh, Big smile. Sham cannot see you. Yeah. Three, two, one. Woo! -hoo. Okay, good. I got it. Yeah. Okay, good. We also want to acknowledge the role players. Do bear with us. We certainly would like to hear what Natalie has installed for all of us later on. Because Natalie was actually District 87 speech champion for a few of the contests. So we certainly are going to learn from her. Okay, great. Let's spotlight all the role players, including Lucky. And um, it's going to be exciting. Patsy, how are we going to spotlight you? Hmm, uh? interesting. Just, just take everybody's picture, myself. all be automatically in. Ah, that's a good idea. Okay, right. you can well, do that. Alicia is not here, right? Uh, yeah, Alicia is not here. Alicia's in all pictures. She's on pictures, yeah. Okay, so I see it? Patsy. I see Patsy already. Yeah. Okay, Natalie so is it. Patricia, Patsy. Natalie, Lucky, and Patsy for. Yeah. Okay. Any... Put yourself also lah, because you're also a photographer. If you can spot yourself. You cannot, then it's okay. Done. Yeah. Done. Yay. Okay, with this, ladies and gentlemen, the time now is 12.17. I would like to hand the control right now to our beautiful, gorgeous Natalie, all the way from Bali. And Natalie, what you have installed for us, I know it's going to be very impactful. So I shall now hand the control over to you and you have four minutes. Go ahead. Thank you, DTM Pat Yap. So it's an honor for me to be here in this wonderful opportunity. And in the spirit of the power of Toastmaster 99, I will split my evaluation into three observations three recommendations and three recommendations. So if you total them all, it becomes nine. So let me start with my observation of the meeting. I really appreciate the hard work from the committee and all role takers for such a celebrate, celebratory vibe. I mean, this is not just a normal meeting, this is a special meeting and you guys certainly keep up the energy up to the roof even until now. I mean, this is already 12, 18. And the second observation is I love how diverse the evaluators and the speakers are from Malaysia to Peru to Canada to Indonesia. I think it really enriches the meeting quality and it offers us like different perspective. And the third observation was the overall flow of the meeting and also the time. Uh, I think it's quite smooth and pretty on time. So kudos for all of us. Now, let me focus on the speech evaluators, all nine of you. I'm sorry, I cannot give like personal recommendation or suggestions or commendation because of the time limitation. So I'm just going to hold it up in the three commendations that I can observe. The first one is I notice all evaluators have slightly different approaches and style in the way they deliver evaluations, but all evaluators delivered their evaluation in a very encouraging manner. I think this is very crucial, especially in Toastmasters, because this is the safest place to make mistakes. And we want to help people to propel them forward and do another speech. So please keep this up. The second commendation or praise is all evaluators evaluated based on project objective. And I believe that in Toastmasters, this is important because every project is like a building block for the next one. So we want to also learn in the moment of enjoyment and slowly but surely because practice makes progress. The third commendation is evaluation is also a form of a speech. And I would like to give my high appreciation for all the evaluators who have demonstrated this skill. It, is, it was impromptu, but they did it like a proper speech, have opening, body or main points and also the closing. So kudos to all evaluators. If my, I may offer my three humble recommendation, the first one is my recommendation is to evaluate more than what you can see. It's very easy to evaluate by, let's say, the body language, the facial expression, the gestures, the movement, 
but it's harder to evaluate the hidden layers of the speech, the content, the structure, the flow, the transition, all of those things that you can't really notice in the first glance. I think that marks a great evaluator if no matter how good the speech is, you can truly observe and spot that one thing that they can improve on in terms of their content, their structure, or even their message. So my suggestion is when you listen to the speech, look more than what you can see and try to really dig deeper into the actual uh, spirit of the speech. The second thing, specifically for recommendation, I have my personal recipe. And my recipe is, recommendation is what plus why plus how. So when you give a recommendation, in each point, you can identify the thing they need to improve, explain why it needs to be improved, and then how give them the example or a demonstration if possible on how to specifically do that point. So for example, if you want to give an ex um, a recommendation about the use of humor, second recommendation is using humor in your presentation. I believe using humor is crucial because it can give an emotional relief for your audience and it can also give a twist that is required for your speech. For example, in this specific point of your speech, you can add a witty wordplay like blah, 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 blah. So that is something that I usually do with my recommendation in the hope of making it very specific and practical so the speaker can take note of that and directly apply it to the next speech. My third and last recommendation is timing-wise. And this is just my personal observation. You can follow it or you don't have to follow it. Timing wise, I believe that it will be more valuable for the speaker if you allocate more time on the recommendation because recommendation is like the meat of evaluation. So to make your time more efficient, try not to retell the speech, but focus on pointing out the thing and then just use a part of the speech as an example. So instead of saying, I noticed that in the beginning, you started off by this story and then you continue on with this thing and then you finalize with the, this, you can say, I really love your storytelling ability. From the beginning until the end, the plot started from when you were born until when you finished uni was excellently delivered. It will cut down 15, 20 seconds, and it will give you extra time to allocate in the recommendation. Overall, I think this is an excellent meeting. Thank you for having me and kudos to all the speakers and evaluators. Back to you, DTM and Patricia. Wow, 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 wow. Amazing, amazing evaluation of evaluations. Ladies and gentlemen, let's send Natalie some love. Yes, 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 spam Natalie with love because the time now Yes, we are all late and I know some of us are really staying over time, but it's certainly worth it. So much values in that. And because of this, we are going to close our meeting at 12.30. But of course, to do justice, to do justice, I certainly need to hear some feedback from some of you. Time is running short. So for some of you, you would like to offer feedback, please turn on your video. So I'm going to call out your name. When I see you have on your video, tell us your experience. Because today what we have done is we have done nine speeches, nine evaluators, plus importing Natalie from Bali so that we can really learn from her. Isn't that amazing? And of course, we're lucky giving us that new year toast. We have already so much, achieved so much, even though it's beyond 99 minutes. But we hope we have made Dr. Rossi Smedley very proud. So I'm going to look over my screen right now and see who would like to share with us very short your feedback. Just 30 seconds, 20 seconds would be awesome. I see Elias. So Elias, I would like to invite you to kickstart. <laughs> I know you're ever ready as well. Oh, hello. Happy 99th anniversary to all of us here. As yes. usual, if DTM Patricia Yap is conducting a meeting, it is like 
perfecto in the perfect the in the planning in the execution and of course the publication so i really like the concept of the nine speakers and the nine evaluators it is like the essence of those masters in a nutshell so yes perfecto Mwah. thank you thank you thank you thank you. thank you elios i would like to invite janet followed by Chek Gu Lim, if you're ready, and certainly Jeffrey. So, Janet, share with us your feedback this time. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. So, I find that it is important that we can uh, grab the sharing that everyone has uh, given. And also, I learned that the uh, Natalie has also given some tips for us to actually work on in terms as an evaluator. I myself has actually gone into the stage of evaluating some speakers of my postmaster stock. Thank you. Very good. We will be inviting you again, Janet. Fantastic. We are going to invite Che Gulin. Yes, I know you're ready. Go ahead. What an awesome way to celebrate the 99th anniversary of Toastmasters. So again, uh, happy anniversary to everyone here. I'm so proud to be a Toastmaster and <clears throat> learn from you all. Thank you. Awesome meeting. Thank yes, you, we always learn. Yeah, we learn from Chegu Lim. We always call her Chegu Lim in Malay. It's actually Teacher Lim because she certainly has a big heart <laughs> to give. Certainly, she embraces the joy of giving. I'd like to hand the control over to Jeffrey. Jeffrey is also a very ardent learner, always willing to learn, always, always there for us. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Thank you, Miss Patricia. Um, just a short words. I, I'm grateful to be here today because I can learn from a lot of the speakers and also evaluators. I think all of us want to learn more. I think Toastmaster is a very good platform to speak and all of us want to speak more in a learning environment. Smile and also uh, like mind over matters. Is, uh, is mind over matters if you don't what they say, if you don't mind, don't mind it, doesn't it doesn't matter. matter. Yes, that's all. Mm, wow. Learning everything and put into practice. That's why we are very smart Toastmasters. I always feel whatever we learn in Toastmasters, we got to practice outside the world of Toastmasters, right? Then you really know how well we do or what sort of gap we need to fill in. I would like to certainly invite Dr. Gayatri as well, just a few words. And then followed by our, let me see who else is ready to speak. Just turn on your screen. Go ahead, Dr. Gash. Thank you so much, Patricia, for inviting me for such a wonderful event. Nine speeches, nine evaluations, and that in itself is a big feat because that is what we come to those classes for, to do speeches, to listen to speeches, and to get inspired. It was a wonderful meeting a very good way to celebrate the 99 years. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for your acknowledgement. I also want to acknowledge Dr. Gayatri is actually very prominent in District 124 and 126. She's very passionate in certainly embracing the joy of giving as well. Great. So we would now also like to invite, let me see who else would like to share. Just unmute yourself. While I'm muting, I'd like to invite Sriya. Sriya, this is your very first time to give an evaluation immediately after the speaker has delivered the speech. And you have done marvelously well. So share with us, what was your magic? Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for having me here. And especially Patricia for approaching me if I would want to be part of the meeting and be an evaluator. Thank you so much for that opportunity because that's the beauty of Toastmasters and that's one of the reasons why I've joined the community is because you get to meet all these people from different countries, different, you know, nations from different geographical locations, speaking different languages. But at the end of the day, we get to share our experiences through speeches and evaluations and improve each other to learn and grow. Definitely a wonderful way for me to also as you said, this is the first time that I immediately gave an evaluation after the speech. Generally, we do have some time to figure out what we want to say, what I'm going to recommend and all. But uh, this time, it's definitely a different experience for me. And I got to learn a lot too. 
and amazing evaluations, amazing speakers, nine speakers and nine evaluations, definitely a tough uh, feat to uh, achieve, you know, in that uh, order where you don't lose track of time, get it done on time and getting all of them together from different parts of the world, different time zones. It's definitely a commendable job for the whole executive committee of the club. Thank you so much for having me, all the evaluators and speakers. It was a wonderful experience and happy 99 Toastmasters for everyone. Happy 99, your breakthrough. Now, Lucky is going to wrap it up for sure. I know the time now we sort of touch on the dot, but I would also like to hear from Jai because Jay has been following us and also my entire journey as well. So a few words from Jai, go ahead. Well, first of all, let me say that staying up so late is not mind over matter, but mind over mattress. And, <laughs> and, and today was the United Nations of Toastmasters. And just like the UN, it was a unique and unbelievable night. So I guess it was uh, wonderful. Um, I loved the speeches. I loved all the evaluations. And I'm so happy that although it's getting to be late night in India too, I have stayed up and been part of this celebration. Uh, congratulations to everybody and uh, happy 99 to all Toastmasters. Thank you. And Ellen, few words from you because you are staying up late for us and we certainly want to send you a lot of love, love, love all over. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Pat for inviting me, okay? Although it was a last minute decision, okay, yes, yep. call, call me in. <laughs> yes. But uh, I'm glad to, to be part of this what, uh, very meaningful 99th birthday meeting with all of you. Staying a little bit night just to feel the vibe so that we can carry hope, we can carry love and carry the faith Towards the, uh, the, towards the next day and many, many other days that were to come in, in the future. With that, back to you, Pat. Mm. Yeah. Ellen, you yeah. are not only a miracle, you are more than a miracle. And I know you are going to inspire your own world, your own tribe, and it's going to be a fun one for you for sure. Thank you so much, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you. You, you, Thank you see him now, you don't see him now. KK. <laughs> yeah, KK. Um, KK, are you able to turn on your screen? We are going a little bit over time because I certainly want to see some of you. And Arafa, Arafa, I see you raised your hand. And uh, Morley, yes, Nikia Morley, Morali. Yeah, I'm very. After, uh, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Patricia. Uh, where is your sister? My sister is uh, having connectivity issue. That's why today she sent Natalie over. <laughs> I'm happy to so see Natalie Jai. Hi, yeah. Jai. How are you? Uh, sir, thank you. <laughs> Great. And uh, happy to see Gayatri, Wendy. Wow, so many people. Uh, excellent. And uh, I don't know whether you all got an invitation, but uh, uh, on behalf of uh, Smedley, Chapter 1, may I request our secretary to read out a message for all of you. Over to you, secretary. Yes, I'm the secretary of Smedley Chapter 1. So all of you are cordially invited to our celebration, which is going to happen Malaysian time Wednesday, Wednesday five, 10 a.m. Okay, huh? this is Smedley Chapter 1. So we are going to have a celebration together with international president-elect Rati Spear. She's going to come and speak to all of us. And that's going to happen on Wednesday, 10 a.m. Malaysian time. President, please, did I get that correct? Yes. Uh, please thought, browse yeah. Please browse your knowledge on insurance. Because, uh, sorry, on uh, Toastmasters, because there's going to be a quiz and that quiz will be organized or rather the MC of that quiz is none other than an ink energetic budding toastmaster who has already completed 11 paths and uh, she is none other than distinguished toastmaster Patricia yeah wow I'm I didn't know I have a big role <laughs> so you have uh, uh, be ready Jeffrey we miss you Jeffrey it's been a long time and uh, I hope uh, Falik uh, Adiba, uh, you you are happy with my 
um, evaluation, I'm sure you will learn yes. a lot. And yeah. uh, our normal guest, Ilos uh, E.T., we expect you there, as well as Jai, uh, we expect you for our uh, anniversary meeting. Gayatri, we need you. Okay. And Achal, all of you. That's a Malaysian 5 o'clock. Uh, Malaysian time, 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, Malaysian 5 o'clock. I'm using it's a Spanish. Wednesday. Wednesday. That's a oh. different one. Okay, confused. don't worry, Lucky. I am your PA. Okay, I will remind you. <laughs> and it's been okay. a pleasure to see and be part of this meeting. Uh, I think this was the toughest challenge I have had in my 11 years of Toastmasters, where the speech is over and immediately we need to give the evaluation. Wow, amazing. Only That's Patricia can organize such events. That's a contribution from KL Advanced Toastmasters. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Can we hear Go from ahead. Mariana, please? A little bit. Sorry? Can we hear from Mariana, please? Yes, Mariana. Oh, she's from Canada, right? So... Yeah. Uh, Mariana has locked out, I think. She's there. She's there. She's having her mail. Yeah, yeah. You can hear yeah. me? You're so stationary. We didn't know you're in person there. <laughs> Mariana um, is there. Yes, we um, would like to hear your feedback. And I am happy to be here. Thank you very much. And yes, I was surprised. I didn't know that I have to deliver the evaluation right after the speech. But we are Toastmasters and we just roll with what happens. That's what we Toastmasters do. So it was a pleasure and I always welcome a new challenge. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mariana. Mariana has been a huge inspiration for me. If you follow her on Facebook, she's on a very, very exciting health journey and it's just wonderful. So I'm one of her followers as well. And I'm really happy you are able to come here and furthermore to support us. And she's excellent with her slides, with her presentation background and all that. So thank Mariana, you, Mariana. Yes, Mariana, I was part of uh, well. District yes. 21 as a division director. Thank you guys. Yes. I need to go first. Thank you for having me. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, Good okay. Night, Natalie. All of you. Natalie. Thank you bye -bye. so much, Natalie. See you, See you again. Bye. All right. So bye. everybody, looks like we are gonna wrap it at night because time is overrun already. Now it's twelve thirty eight. And before yes. we go, go ahead and type your favorite favorite takeaway from the entire meeting so that we can keep improving. And of course, this will not be the one and only one. We would like to do this in the future again so that we are able to experiment and certainly bless all speakers within a shorter span of time and also to challenge ourselves to evaluate different speakers from different different genre, different, different background and different space. Certainly, yes. All right. Good. So okay. do leave your kind words and your encouraging messages behind. Yes. And of course, you would like to join Advanced Hashtag Ardent Speakers Club. We are more than welcome to have you. We meet every Monday, every single Monday, 12.30 to 1.30. So this Monday, we are going to have another meeting, one hour meeting. And on the 30th, we are going to have our master class with us. We will invite a very established, prominent leader here to bless us and certainly to share with us certain topic and the next topic is on the power of mentoring all right so with this thank you so much for staying with us we will close Bye. yeah Bye. we will close the room in a few seconds with this happy 99 anniversary Bye. again thank you so much everybody oh thank you good night good night thank you patsy well, welcome yeah. to centenary yeah. meet uh, yeah dear. Okay, all right. Patsy's mom is sleeping right now, but thank you so much, Patsy. You have been amazing. Thank Great. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, see you, see you, see you. Thank you. But, but did you see my t-shirt? A new one from Telecom. Wow, this is so nice. Oh, very the logo, nice. With the logo yeah. and behind oh TM Toastmasters. Behind so TM Toastmasters. Did you print it yourself? Yep, yep. 
Oh, good. Hey, by the way, teacher uh, Chiguli, you know, we are having Smedley. This is very crazy. Smedley chapter one is 5 a.m. today, you know. If you are very crazy, um, yeah, I will send you the link, okay? And Elias, if you are very crazy, yeah, also, yeah. I yeah. know about it, but but I don't think I'm crazy that time. <laughs> yeah, okay, never mind. It's okay. My if beauty sleep. Crazy, then come, yeah, otherwise, it's okay. Okay, don't worry. I know it's really a lot going on. Okay. But bye. really appreciate you. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. I'll stop the recording too. Bye. Bye.